What's up guys? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. This is Travis here. Today's video is part two in our build series for our 300 gallon reef. Now in this one, we're going to take a closer look at the stealth box from customaquariums.com. We're going to be setting it up via the Herbie method and installing it on the 300 gallon reef. We're also going to be setting up all the drain lines directly into the sump. I'll show you guys the ins and outs of that, as well as the return pump and the check valve. So let's go ahead and get into this video. So you guys might have noticed those rubber seals on the side of the box are actually glued in place. Now it did not come that way. I went ahead and did that on my own just because uh, I was moving the box on and off the tank several times, aligning up the drain uh, plumbing and all that kind of stuff as I mentioned in the previous video. And I just got sick of them falling off. So I just simply glued them in place. So maybe that might be something that custom aquariums will do down the road because it does make installation a hundred times easier not having to mess with those a little rubber seals. Now the overflow box is rated for 2400 gallons per hour and it came with two H2 overflows that you guys will see here in a second. Now it does have two 1.5 inch drain lines that are already drilled in the box ready for the slip slip connection for the PVC pipe. Now I went ahead and actually drilled a third one because it has the option to have up to four as well as three quarter inch and one half inch whatever you so choose for your drain lines. Now I usually run two main uh, drain lines for my Herbie method. Now you could definitely get away with just having one and then have the uh, stand, uh, stand pipe for the backup or the overflow just in case it gets clogged. But I always ran two and since I have four slots on the sump I figured filling three of those four slots would be uh, better than just two. Now the first thing I did is I went ahead and measured out where I wanted my uh, stand pipe slash uh, backup line to be and I'm actually decided to put it all the way to the left hand side of the overflow box and this is there just in case uh, for whatever reason if something was to get down the drain and clog up those two main drains it would overflow up to the point of that backup drain and then make sure that of course it goes down into the sump and not all over the floor. So I decided to put that all the way to the left because it gave me more room for the two main drains and I always run these elbows in my um, overflow box. Now some people can do just a straight pipe and then of course dial it down and it works just fine. But I always found that it was a little bit quieter when I ran the elbow as opposed to just a straight pipe. And you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about here once you see it installed. Now when it comes to these fittings within the box, I never glue them. Uh, just because you never know if you want to change something around. Maybe you have too many waves going into the tank. Like in my 125, I had so much flow and so many waves within the tank that it was kind of impacting how the flow in the back of the box was regardless of how much I dialed it down. It kind of made a splashing noise up until the point where I went in there and cut the PVC, lowered the elbow down a little bit more, and the noise went away. Now if I glued everything in place, I wouldn't have been able to make that adjustment and I would have had to deal with that awful noise uh, until I took the system down. So really just leaving them in there won't be an issue if they ever come loose you'll definitely hear it in the overflow box all right now that the fittings are done let's go ahead and set up the drain lines for the box now I've already set this box on the tank put it in place and basically measured out where I wanted the pipes to be and cut them to size now all I have to do is just attach them to the overflow box and uh, this is where I take uh, the most time and I kind of am very tedious about this part because it's you get one shot at making this happen and making it a very good seal and if you mess it up well you're just going to have an issue for a long time at least until depending on how bad the issue is or the leak might be at least until the salt creep can catch up and kind of seal it but other than that guys I really go out of my way to make sure that there's plenty of glue plenty, plenty of primer and that I hold it in place twist it and make sure that it's a solid seal uh, before before moving on to anything else. Now I always like to install my drain lines while the overflow box is off because a while ago I actually installed some while the box was on there and it was just stupid. I mean the tank was already empty. I simply could have uh, moved it from the wall and did all the work that way but I decided to do it while it was still on the tank and I just didn't get a good seal. Of course over time the salt creep like I mentioned before uh, sealed up the little minor leak that I had on one of the drains but it could have been prevented if I just took an extra 10 minutes removed the box and then installed the drain lines on there. So here is a quick look at the overflow box with the fittings installed. Now I also installed the H2 overflows to give you guys a good idea of what it's going to look like with the tank up and running. And I actually have them in a way that they're kind of next to the tank, a little bit more stealthier that way. And I really like how they turned out. Now I also went ahead and glued those PVC fittings to the bulkheads just to make them stable. They were a little loose, but overall it worked out great. All right, now that the overflow box is installed, let's go to move on to some of the other equipment we're going to be using for this installation. Now, right here, we're looking at four CPEX ball valves I picked up at BulkReefSupply.com, and uh, two of them are one inch for the return lines, and then two of them are 1.5 inch that will be going on those drains to dial down the flow for our Herbie method. Now, I've been using these ball valves for a couple years now, and I really like them. Uh, not only do they have built-in unions so you can take them apart, clean them, and it makes it very easy for installation, but also it has the ability to swap out uh, the threaded threaded or the slip slip, or you can do a mixture of both. Uh, they're really great, and um, I probably won't use any other ball valve uh, as long as these are being made. 
All right, the next thing we're going to look at here are the one inch to three quarter inch uh, couplings. Basically, earlier on when the tank was being built, I went ahead and had it drilled with uh, three quarter inch bulkheads for the returns just because I wanted to run three quarter inch lines. But later on, I decided I was going to go ahead and go up to one inch. And all I really have to do now is just kind of uh, right before it goes into the bulkhead. And you guys will see that here in a second. I just go ahead and add this coupling and it works just fine. Now, the next thing we have here is the... Um, Wayne check valve now this thing is top-notch this is by far the best check valve I've ever used and uh, it doesn't come with any unions because you don't need to take it apart other than that side piece that you guys just saw uh, you could take it apart and clean it that way but this thing is rock solid it's really heavy that little weight right there and uh, it definitely ensures that there won't be any uh, backflow into the sump now the next piece of equipment isn't necessarily needed for my plumbing but I always wanted one of these flow sensors and I actually installed it after the manifold so I can see how much flow is going to the main display. Now I would prefer to have white fittings to kind of go with the whole red, white, and blue theme and I just couldn't find them at Home Depot for whatever reason they didn't have what I was looking for. So I'm kind of stuck with the gray. It's not a big deal. I just kind of have it installed up out of the way and you're not really going to notice it anyways. But uh, yeah, this thing's pretty cool. I like how it uh, monitors all the flow and I did have a little bit of an issue um, getting it to connect to Apex Fusion. I could get it to come up on the classic dashboard, but I had some issues getting it to Fusion regardless of the Apex being updated, the FMM module being updated. It was just a pain in the ass. And then finally, I just turned off the entire Apex, turned it back on, and then it showed up. So uh, yeah, I wish I knew that after you know 35 minutes or 35 minutes prior to messing with the whole setup. But other than that, it uh, works out great. And uh, it's really nice to know what kind of flow you have going to your main display. All right, moving on to the last piece of equipment, and that is the return pump. I am using a Jabo DCS 12000. Now, I decided uh, at last minute I was going to use this pump. I originally had the Ecotech uh, ready to go. I was going to use that, but I decided I'd rather use that extra money to go towards the lighting for this setup opposed to uh, the return pump. Now, I already had this pump ready to go. I wanted to use it, and uh, it's never failed me. I've used it on several systems, so I figured uh, why not just use it for now and maybe make the upgrade uh, later on. Now, of course, with every one of the uh, builds, the output on this pump is actually 1.5 inch, so I have to get it down to whatever size I need for the return line. Now, I'm using these fittings I picked up at Home Depot to get it from 1.5 inch down to the 1 inch, and then, of course, connect it to the manifold within the sump. So here is a quick look at how I set it up for the sump. Now the pump is a little too wide to do a direct PVC straight pipe up to the fitting. So I went ahead and had to add these elbows just to bring the pump a little bit away from the acrylic wall there to connect it to the bulkhead. Now it worked out great. It fits perfectly fine and I'm happy the way it turned out. All right, now that you guys have seen everything, let's go ahead and start the install. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to be using these fittings to go from one inch to three quarter inch into the bulkhead. It's pretty simple. I went ahead and did some measurements behind the tank just to make sure I could still fit in an elbow as well as uh, these fittings without causing any damage to the bulkhead or, um, you know, not being able to fit it between the wall. Now, I went ahead and just made some uh, cuts with the PVC here, uh, glued them together, of course, test fitting it uh, before doing that, and then uh, lined everything up and it worked out great. Now, these are just simply going to slide into the back of the tank. Uh, bulkhead wise and then I can attach that elbow and I can start the plumbing uh, for the return lines. Here is a quick look of how I installed these in the back of the bulkhead just to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now as you can see they slide directly into the bulkhead. Um, again I just want to make sure everything's lined up and it fits perfectly. I am going to uh, glue the actual fitting first. I will leave uh, the elbow loose that way I can make all the adjustments on the rest of the PVC before finally hard gluing everything together. All right, when it comes to setting up these return lines, we're going to be using two one-inch ball valves. One of them will be right after the manifold, which I will use to uh, add head pressure to put more flow to the manifold. And then there will be one here on the right-hand side before it goes into uh, the bulkhead, allow me to add head pressure to send more flow to the left-hand side of the tank. Now, I do this just because I don't want all the flow coming out the right-hand side. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. It's just kind of personal preference, a little bit of OCD there. And I like to have even flow coming out both uh, return lines. Now below that, we're going to go ahead and add a, a T fitting, which of course will send flow to the left-hand side. And below that, we'll be adding the um, check valve, which will stop all the flow from coming in to the sump. All right, now that that's all taken care of, let's go ahead and move on to where I'm going to install this flow meter. As I mentioned before, I want to put it after the main ball valve on the uh, manifold here. That way I know how much flow is actually going to the main display. And uh, because the main return pump is rated for about 3,200 gallons per hour, I am getting about 22 to 2300 gallons per hour going to the main display leaving approximately a thousand for the refugium as well as both the uh, gfo and carbon reactors 
All right, now that you guys have seen the return lines, let's go ahead and move over to the drains. Now, I will be using three 1.5-inch uh, drain lines. Of course, two of those are the main ones that are going to be dialed down via those uh, ball valves. And then, of course, the far one to the right is for the emergency just in case they were ever to get clogged. Now, it's a pretty cool setup. I really like um, how everything worked together, especially with the blue PVC. Uh, I usually don't use the blue too often, but it worked out great with the white fittings. And I actually picked those up from Home Depot. Now, the way that I plumbed this was to save room for the uh, skimmer cup. That's the most important thing. So I wanted them to come out of the stand, kind of go to uh, the left as quickly as possible to get over to the sump, leaving plenty of room for that giant collection cup on the Niles Quantum 300. And it worked out perfectly fine. It's not even close to touching the PVC, and uh, it's just gorgeous. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it gave you an insight in my whole theme behind plumbing uh, systems. And uh, it's been successful so far for many different tanks. And, of course, I wanted to bring what I've done in the past that have worked out well to this new build. Now, guys, in the next video, we will be installing that Niles Quantum 300 as well as the heaters. I'll be setting up a version of the Apex ATK within this sump using my own uh, float switches and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll try to do some Apex programming and all that, test fill it, and then do some aquascaping. So, uh, guys, I hope you enjoy this series. I'm going to try to um, – I could have made this video a lot uh, shorter and then kind of extended it out. But I want to get this content out to you guys because there's so many videos that I want to get done for this channel. And there's no reason to drag this process out any more than it should. Now, if you do want to support the build, please check out my Patreon or check out my website for coral sales I am saving money for LED lighting uh, it's gonna be a little bit I'm not really in any kind of rush it will happen when it happens and uh, I'm just thankful that the system is up and running because it was pretty stressful for about a week trying to put all this together either way guys I'll see you later peace